Hey everyone, John for Nintendo Life here, and I've been thinking about the 3DS. I was looking on our rank list for NintendoLife.com, and something was missing. And this game was also missing on competing sites like um, IBM and GameStop. And look, our lists are fan voted. It's not like you have no taste. Dragon Quest VIII is number nine of all the 3DS games. So where is Dragon Quest XI? Some of you might be saying, Dragon Quest XI? 3DS? What's this guy talking about? Well, let me take you to a little place called Japan. I hear these guys quite like Dragon Quest. We've got every numerical one here apart from 10, but over in Japan, on 3DS specifically, they had so many games the West didn't see. In fact, on 3DS alone, you can play every single mainline Dragon Quest game. They got 1, 2, and 3, which we didn't. 4, 5, and 6 are backwards compatible. 7 got a remake. 8 got a re remastered, demaster kind of hybrid. 9's backwards compatible. There was a cloud version of 10. And then, there was the 3DS version of Dragon Quest XI. On the exact same day, July 29th, 2017, there were two different versions of Dragon Quest XI, PS4 and 3DS. And when I say there were two versions, really, I mean there were three versions. You might be familiar with the 2D mode. This was featured in Dragon Quest XI-S, but it originates from the 3DS version. But the 3DS version isn't primarily a 2D game, it's also a 3D game, a very different 3D game to the other 3D game. There's barely any information in the West about this 3DS version, but over in Japan, it was the primary one. In its first two days of sale, the 3DS version was way ahead of PlayStation 4. 1.13 million on 3DS, and 950,000 on PlayStation 4. And keep in mind too, the Switch was already out at this time. People were tired of the 3DS, but not tired enough to skip Dragon Quest. The 3DS version is fascinating, not just because we didn't get it in the West, but it's just really, really cool. That 2D mode in S is a very cool way to play the game, but it's much better contextualized on 3DS. In fact, throughout the entirety of the opening, you can seamlessly go between 2D and 3D. The top screen shows the low poly 3D, and the bottom screen is entirely 2D, and everything you do mirrors on both screens. And let's say you touch the D-pad last. That means any fight you go into will have the classic retro-style combat, whereas if you touch the circle pad, you get the brand new 3D combat. It's probably the best use of dual displays I've ever seen. This stuff's great. Now, because this game isn't documented much, many think it lasts the entire adventure, and it doesn't. Once you and Eric escape the dungeons, you get an option between 2D and 3D. You can always change back at a church, but the entire game does not mirror this 2D-3D hybrid. And that's probably for the best, as it would put limitations on what you can achieve in 3D. But that said, for this hybrid, you get a ton of cutscenes, two towns, and a chunk of the overworld. Mirroring the entire game would have taken a lot of work, but even this is very impressive. But anyway, you can play in 2D on Switch, so that stuff isn't as interesting. What exactly is different about the 3D style? Well, to put it simply, it's barely the same game as the HD version. Yeah, events are the same and the world design's similar, but it's far from identical. Let's start with little things. The pacing is different. The scene direction is largely the same as the HD version, but keeping these two in sync is very tough. Like, look at the opening here. On Switch, it lingers on the hero for quite a while, whereas on 3DS, it goes, nah, get on with it. But pushing the Switch version back a little bit, and the scenes are actually very, very similar in pacing. There's a few different cuts and ways of showing elements, and expressions are also quite different, but for the most part, these scenes are very, very similar. It's also worth noting that Japan didn't get any voice acting until the S version, even PlayStation 4 was silent, and so these CG cinematics end up feeling a little bit awkward. Everything on 3DS is far more condensed. For Switch to stand a chance of matching, you've got to sprint everywhere. And even then, most times, you still can't quite keep up. The general level design does try and keep consistent, but then you'll see areas like this, which just miss entire staircases on 3DS. Also, sometimes things do play out quite differently. On Switch, looking up at the mountain and encountering slimes are the exact same scene, but on 3DS, they're split. After looking at the mountain, you walk down to the cave where the slimes come out and meet you there. Same idea, just a bit different. Then the combat itself. There's two different styles on Switch. One's a bit more cinematic and classic, whereas in the other one you can move around freely until it's your turn. They're both the same, just different angles. 3DS doesn't have these options, just the classic camera. Apart from that, fights are the exact same. 
Where things are very different though are the dungeons. On Switch you'll be walking across these narrow logs and bridges, whereas on 3DS it's just a giant spiral. These could be completely different areas, they're not even close to comparable. But in terms of pacing, 3DS isn't always faster. This scene here where you rescue Cole plays out much slower on 3DS. Likewise the scene where the Luminary awakens his powers, also much slower on 3DS. But then there's a bunch of other scenes that are much faster on 3DS, there's really no rule. But the gameplay is almost always faster on 3DS. I mean, look at this right here. Not only are these vines much shorter, but look at the way you go across this wall. <laughs> on Switch you very slowly sort of shuffle across, whereas on 3DS, you just sprint. It's the same area, but way smaller. There's also a lot more loading points on 3DS. Now the game loads really fast, but this area here which is seamless on Switch is a loading cave on 3DS. And the towns are almost unrecognizable, they are so much smaller. What you're seeing right here is the exact same spot. That bridge on 3DS is barely anything, whereas on Switch, it stretches across the entire screen. House placement is largely the same, but I struggled to make my way around here because of the scale, I just couldn't really recognize a lot of it. In fact, on Switch, you follow the dog, Sandy, to your house, whereas on 3DS, there's no need for that, you're gonna find your house. It's a small town. The world design really is different, and there's a ton of ways too the game just expresses itself differently. Like in this scene here with Hero and his adopted mum, she gives him a hug. That's not there at all in the HD version. And this part's pretty fascinating too. When Hero's leaving town on Switch, Gemma runs to meet him just as he's about to leave, whereas on 3DS, he's already left. The scene cuts to a scene of him travelling, and then Gemma runs after him out of breath. The dialogue and the actual event are the same, but the context is a little bit different. I actually think this scene's a lot better on 3DS. And then we have the overworld, which is drastically different and much, much smaller on 3DS. You can barely recognize these as the same game, but still the overall design is the same. They both have this bridge leading to a cave, and on 3DS this is a load zone. In both you travel through the cave and come out on a grassy field, and in both you can see the castle way off in the distance. However, there are many, many cuts. So both games are starting from the same house right here, and let's see how quickly they desync. Alright, so on 3DS we are already on the road to the castle, and keep in mind I'm sprinting on Switch, this is as fast as I can go on foot. Let's just linger here on the road for a while while Switch catches up. Might take a little bit. And I'd say this is about where we started waiting on 3DS. So yeah, that's a whole chunk of overworld that's just not there. It makes travel way faster. Other towns are likewise fascinating. I mean, all the core elements are here. Both of them have this fountain right in the center, followed by a staircase. And that leads to this garden area with another staircase. Only on Switch, this is a far more elaborate staircase going all the way around, whereas on 3DS, you just go forward. In terms of the scenes themselves, things can be a bit less dynamic on 3DS. Like on Switch over here, they push Hero around through the dungeons, whereas on 3DS, he just kind of follows them nicely. You'll also see on Switch in this part here, they physically push out these stones, whereas on 3DS, they just cut to it. Some angles are also a bit different. On 3DS, Eric pulls in the guard from his perspective, whereas on Switch, it's Hero's perspective. It's a lot of minor story elements that do add up, but the gameplay itself is where it really, really does differ. This stealth segment for example, on Switch you hide behind these boxes and wait for the guards to go around on their patrol, whereas on 3DS you just quietly sneak past them. Dragon Quest XI on 3DS is such a cool game. When this was first announced, I was more excited for this than the HD version. I thought the 2D and 3D hybrid was so cool, and at the time I wasn't aware this wasn't the entire game, but still, what they've made here is so impressive. How many games have this big, high-budget AAA production, and then also this handheld version which is identical in many ways, but still fascinatingly different in others? You get the core and raw Dragon Quest XI here with barely any sacrifices. Like those who played on 3DS played this game. I mean even calling them sacrifices isn't accurate. This isn't worse, in many ways it's better. It's a much faster, and in many ways more expressive game than the HD version. I mean how many 3DS games can you think of that are of the scale of Dragon Quest XI? I can think of barely any, this really was one of the most important games on the entire system, and we didn't get it here in the west. For Japanese players, this game was as big as Mario and Zelda and Smash, and I just find it really interesting that we didn't get that. Our impression of the 3DS library is very different to theirs. 
We'll surely get more versions of Dragon Quest XI over time, but it's pretty unlikely we'll ever get this version. For most of us, this will remain a curiosity. And that's a shame, because if we did get it here, it would no doubt be on this list. And IBMs and GameStops. So what do you guys think about the 3DS version of Dragon Quest XI? Had you seen this before, and have you played it yourself? Let us know in the comments below, and of course go to that subscribe button and turn it from 3D to 2D, and also look at this icon. It's so cute. Even it has the hybrid. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. <laughs>